to the Drury Panthers Coaches Show, brought to you by Hold Fast Brewing. I'm Steve Casson, along with the head coach of the Panthers, Jeremy Law, and assistant coach Cliff Cook. Guys, this weekend, a big set of victories over the Arkansas Razorbacks. 7-1 in game one, and before you knew it, it was 6 nothing, and you kind of had that one in control in Arkansas on Friday. And then Saturday, a different game, down 2 nothing, and then you come back with five straight goals to take the victory 5-2 to two over Arkansas. A tale of two different games. Uh, how did you see those both playing out? Yeah, um, obviously Friday I didn't expect us to get out to that good of a start, but that was great. And uh, you know when you're you know up six nothing, it's pretty easy to hold the lead. And um, I felt like we were in control of the whole game. Saturday they came out really hard. I felt like uh, we maybe thought it might have been an easier game than it was, and that tends to happen on you know back to back. And uh, when you just control a game and then think it's going to be easy so uh, I think that was what was our you know problem on Saturday night so yeah we our key going into the weekend was just to keep the momentum up uh, the wins were great I think uh, admittedly we didn't play our best hockey all weekend but we kept that that winning mentality going which was good we found a way to win which is sometimes more important than anything when we're not playing our best we, f- we found a way to, to kind of figure things out this is really going to be your first and only chance to see regionals at a D2 level because you're going up to Division One next season. And then you'll have a Division Three team, but nothing in Division II. Uh, really, you're kind of in uh, uncharted waters as you get into this regional system here. Yeah, we're, uh, we're excited. We, we leave Thursday and uh, kind of win and keep going and lose and come home. So we're excited. To, we've been playing well at the right time. Um, I think win six of our last seven, so we're definitely on the on the right path right now. And I think uh, you know it's it's all as you know, Steve, with playoffs in sure. NHL, especially any any level, uh, it's just kind of clicking and playing well at the right time. So I, I feel like we're we're definitely at the, at the right time for that. It's definitely a learning curve, like you said, though. It's and it's a a new scenario in that we discussed it the other day. You and I talked before we got on air here that uh, I believe, truly believe that. The regional part of this is going to be tougher than nationals. Nothing sure. against nationals, but when you're talking a one-and-done scenario where every single game is key as opposed to D2 nationals, which is around Robin, you know, we're going to have to run a gauntlet to get those three wins next weekend to, to move on, and we're fully capable of it the way we're playing. So uh, we're excited, um, excited to face off against a team we've never seen before to start it out. That, of course, will be Sioux College in the first round on the 23rd at Patterson Ice Arena in Grand Rapids. And that'll be an interesting thing because, like you say, these are teams that they're there for a reason and Drury's there for a reason. But it's the first time having to kind of really bear down in a sense because you look at the schedule this year, and, yeah, there have been some tough games, but it's been an easy clip. And now you're getting into the next level of teams in regionals. Yeah, yeah. we, you know, the last, with the exception maybe this weekend and taking nothing away from Arkansas, obviously in the past they've been a formidable team at every level. They're, they're down from where they've been in the past, but they're still, I mean, as they proved yesterday, fully capable of, you know, playing well. But we've run a bit of a gauntlet even just within our last, our previous six games. You talk about Iowa before the Christmas break. Um, they were number three in the region at the time. Then we start the semester with Lindenwood who by the time we played them were number two in the country. They had been number one previously, got a nice split with them, and then we went on the road to Maryville and took care of business there against who at the time I believe were eight or nine in the region. So, you know, we're used to having those, you know, high stress, intense matchups. So we're, that puts us in a good frame of mind to be ready for next weekend. Now, teams want to have two or three good scoring lines and it's not to say that you don't but leading your team has always been Jacob Hawley, Keegan Ferguson and Ethan O'Rourke the one line that you have that statistically is putting the puck in the net what do you need to do to kind of counteract that if they get shut down in in a situation that might be tough well I think as of late we we've had some more depth scoring and um, we're starting to get you know second and third line scoring and um, we're kind of playing like a complete team right now. We have we have a shutdown line. We have uh, three lines that are putting the puck in the net, and then we have guys that are you know doing really well on the PK for us. So our PK since Christmas break is 
Uh, I don't have the statistics, but it's been phenomenal. So we've been uh, uh, doing really well with the, with the PK too. So, Jeremy talked earlier about clicking at the right time. I think that goes with just how our lineup is shaped as well. You know, the only line that stayed together consistently all year has been that, you know, Holly, Ferguson, O'Rourke line. But I think over the last few weeks, we finally kind of found the balance we've been looking for. A big part of that was getting our, the new guy, Quinn O'Reilly, in. It gave us a, another, you know, large human as an option, but he also got skills. So I think now, once we get everybody back and healthy, we're going to be in good shape for next weekend with four solid lines we can rely on. You know, it's interesting. I did an interview with Quinn O'Reilly yesterday, and I said to him, I said, now, if Coach puts you on a line with Riley O'Connor, I'm going to screw that one up. <laughs> sure, <laughs> enough. sure enough, he's sure on enough. the line. Yeah. And he scored a goal yesterday, he too. Did. So uh, that, that's kind of nice, too. But, you know, getting back to Nationals quickly, it's Sioux College. What do you know about Sioux College, ranked number eight, coming into regionals? <laughs> well, we... Not a whole lot. We, uh, I know Cookie's a little bit ahead of me on watching game film, and I'm going to start. I uh, started yesterday. I'm going to watch some more tonight. But uh, they have one really good line. They have one pro arguably the best Division II player in the country uh, who has 42 goals. So um, they, they uh, I feel if we shut down their top line and um, play the way we've been playing, we'll, we'll be in good shape. But, yeah, they're, they're going to be good. It can be a good test for us. And, uh, every team that's at, at regionals, like Cookie said, is is there for a reason. So, they got a lot of team speed from what little I've seen so far. I've watched probably two games. Have a lot more to watch over the next few days, but a lot of team speed. But again, we we have a lineup that can counteract that. And as we told the guys in the locker room after last night, Jeremy told, you know, with all the positives we can lean on, we don't talk about enough. All three of our goaltenders are rolling right now. Sure. So we are confident putting anybody in net. Um, we already have a pretty good idea of what we're going to do uh, for game one, but uh, you know we would be confident putting any of those three in right now. Yeah, yesterday Brett Sweet had to make some sweet yeah. saves to keep Drury in the game yesterday. And I'll tell you, in addition to that, there's one play in that game in particular. I remember I think we were on the penalty kill, and Tyler Kane made an unbelievable block on an empty yep. net right in front of the net that uh, you know would have been a game changer had it gone the other way. When you look at what you're going to have to do in regionals you can't look past the fact that you're moving up to division one next year i'm sure that's on the back burner until regionals and hopefully nationals get over but you do have some idea of the way you're going to shape your team obviously being with uh, the neighbor missouri state for six years and kind of knowing what division one's like what is your game plan yeah like you said Steve, i think we're kind of Focusing on regionals, nationals, and finishing our D2 season here. But um, once that gets done, we'll we'll be in full recruiting mode and and piecing together that team. And and we're we're fully you know, in the know of of what what sure. it takes to be a top 20 team at that level. And uh, what you need, you need you know good character, and you need you need a complete team. You need to have you know fourth line grinders, top six forwards, and good goaltending. All that all that plays in. So I think uh, once we complete the task at hand here we'll we'll focus up on that well we'll complete a task and talk to a couple of players coming up uh, one of them is quinn o'reilly and we'll do that in just a moment <laughs> you are listening to the jury panthers coaches show brought to you by hold fast brewing Welcome back to the Jury Panthers Coaches Show, brought to you by Hold Fast Brewing. Now with us is Riley O'Connor and Jacob Hawley. And I just got finished saying that I knew I was going to do that. But first of all, what's it like being on a line with Quinn O'Reilly? Uh, I mean, I like it personally. Uh, he's quite the energetic guy, uh, one of the most energetic guys we have. We don't really get the names mixed up too much because they, they call him Junkyard Dog. Okay for reasons I don't know and I really don't want to know, but <laughs> the names usually don't get mixed up, but I like playing with him. He's a good player. 
this is a hockey team that has kind of gone through a lot of transition. Last year was the season it was. This year is a completely different season. What do you like about this season? I'm not comparing the two, but what do you like that's different about this season? Uh, I feel like the guys are just a lot closer. Like last year, like I don't really feel like we did too much as a team versus this year. Like we do a lot together. Like we hang out every day and on the weekends go out together and just have fun together. Um, and we're also a much better team, which makes it a lot more enjoyable. And what about you, Jacob? Uh, yeah, kind of what just OC said. I mean, we have a close group. We have a good bond. Um, we're all always hanging out, finding ways to hang out with each other outside the classroom, outside the rink, get together whenever we can. And we kind of just grew a bond and connection with all the boys. This is a team that started out very well, had a couple of bumps in the road. Uh, what was the locker room like when you kind of feel felt like, oh, we're, we're kind of losing games we shouldn't be losing? Uh, I mean, yeah, we kind of knew we were beating ourselves there because we were just taking a lot of penalties, and when we take penalties, we're not as a dominant hockey team as we should be. And these last, like, eight games, I think it's been, we've been out of the box more and we've been dominant. I mean, I think we're, like, 6-2 and two in the last eight or whatever it is. And, you know, I think we really found our team identity this second half of the semester, and we're kind of rolling and going into regionals hot, so. Jacob, you're in a line with Ferguson and Ethan O'Rourke. That's kind of been the top line all year. Uh, do you guys feel any kind of pressure to keep performing the way you guys statistically have? Uh, not really. Um, we kind of go into games loose, and, you know, we're confident with everybody in the lineup. I mean, we know the other lines can score goals. We know our D can, you know, stop it from going in. We know our goalies. We've got good goalies. Um, those other lines, I mean, they produce, um, they create energy, and we kind of feed off of it. So if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So. And, Riley, you know, you were on a line yesterday with – I believe uh, it's Kangas, uh, Brady Kangas, yep. and of course Quinn O'Reilly. Uh, how do you like that line? I liked it. It was me and my first time playing with uh, Brady and Quinn together, but I <clears throat> um, felt like we just had a lot of energy and like we, we were hitting a lot yesterday, so I liked it. And uh, we had a, good, a couple of good scoring chances, and Quinn buried one, which was nice. This is a team that, as we just talked to head coach Jeremy Law and assistant coach Cliff Cook, has three goaltenders that you can put in at any time and not have to worry. What's the confidence like when you have three goaltenders like that on your team? Uh, it, I mean, it's really nice. I like, it's obvious like everyone's gonna make a mistake during the game, and we're gonna give up some like odd man rushes and stuff. And we just have all the confidence in all three goalies like they can make the save and uh, keep us in the game. First time in the postseason. So, what do you prepare for? What do you expect? Uh, for me, like we just, I tell the boys, just leave everything out there. Like you're gonna regret it tomorrow if you don't leave everything out there and just play your heart out. Jacob, I mean, yeah, postseason. I mean, it's a new season. It's zero zero. The records are zero zero. Um, so you just gotta play loose. We, I mean, like I said, I think we found our team identity. If we can just keep playing how we're doing and not put too much worry or stress in ourselves, I think we'll be all right. You know who you're playing. It's Sioux College. Have you? figured out anything about them? Do you know anything about them? Um, as far as I've heard and seen, they got a fast team. Um, they got, I think, one line or just one guy that really can score. As long as we can shut him down, I think we're all right. I think we're a fast team as well. And from what I've seen, they don't really, they haven't really played any physical teams. And we have a few guys that like to throw bodies. So I think as long as we play physical, um, stay smart, composure, discipline, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, I think if we just stick to our game plan, we'll be just fine. Okay, I got a couple of quick questions for you, Riley. Who is the best chirper on the team? Now it might be Quinn O'Reilly. Um, it used to be uh, Keegan Ferguson, but I think uh, Quinn has taken that spot very easily. What do you think, Jacob? Yeah, I think Junkyard Dog, which is Quinn O'Reilly, has got that spot now. So that's his nickname, Junkyard Dog. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what are your guys' nicknames? Uh, everybody just calls me Halls or Holly. Just keep it simple. Yeah, they just call me OC. There you go. That works. Uh, well, that's good. Uh, they don't call me anything unless they're mad at me, but either way, <laughs> it works out. So, again, you, you guys have regionals, and then you have a couple of games in between. If you end up making nationals, you'll play Oklahoma State. So it's nice that you get to play a few more games, especially at home, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we have one of the best crowds 
at least from what we've played all year on the road. I mean, we definitely have one of the best crowds, and it'd be nice to play those two games, you know, keep the momentum going on kind of just some tune-up games for the Nationals. So. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Well, good luck in postseason, and I appreciate you doing this. You've been watching the Drury Panthers Coaches Show brought to you by Holdfast Brewing. Hey!